All right, guys, so today is a very exciting day. We are going to make the final iPhone animation and it looks like this. So I've got the iPhone right here and I'm going to select this empty. I'm going to press Alt R and it is on this axis. So if you press one on the numpad, as you can see, uh, it will be placed like this. Now I'm also going to set the camera ready already. So Control Alt zero, and then we've got the camera right in the middle. Maybe we're going to bring this back just a little bit. And all we have to do now is animate this empty. So I'm going to drag up this timeline and I want this iPhone to end on, let's say frame 40. I'm going to bring this towards this side somewhere over here. Press I and then I'm going to frame zero or frame one actually. And I'm going to place this on the X axis all the way over here. And then I will press I once again. And now we've got two keyframes. This animation looks very boring, but that's not a problem. We're going to change that straight away. I'm actually going into the graph editor by pressing control tab and opening this up. We only have an X location, so you can close everything off except for this one. Select the X, press A, press dot. And now we've got our line right over here. And basically what I want to do is make sure that it goes fast in the beginning. And that is by dragging this line upwards let's see what it does for us Hoppa. and uh, that already looks exactly to my liking this is exactly what i want no problem at all uh, so what i want to do now is basically take this iphone and i'm going to copy it uh, make sure that we're on the last frame here shift d y bring it backwards make sure that you have only the empty selected when you do this so i'm going to select this iphone I'm going to press on zero and i'm going to bring this to the side and let's see maybe i want it to be revealed somewhere somewhere over here but it should be fully revealed at frame 40. so right now i'm going to rotate this something like this press zero g and x make sure it's hidden just a little bit let's have some space here as well slightly backwards and press i we want it to be revealed like somewhere over here so from this area onwards so from frame 20 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to rz and i'm going to rotate it like this and press i and now we got a rotation animation going on for us very cool but it should be hidden before all the frames because if we look at this one now it's kind of hiding here already and you can see that it is there from the start but we want it to be revealed so on frame 19 one frame before the previous keyframe we're actually going to scale this to zero so s zero press i and now all of a sudden there appears an iphone but it is not entirely hidden. And the way that I'm going to fix it is simply by going into the delta, delta transform, and I'm going to move this X location to the side until it is completely hidden. Now let's go into the graph editor and let's make sure that our Z rotation is happening a bit quicker. So close this off, open up the Z Euler rotation, click on this, and maybe we can bring this up as well. That looks pretty smooth. Whoop pretty cool looking animation over there. Now I want to do this for two more iPhones, but I don't want to do the same process over and over again. So what I'm going to do is simply select all of this. And now we've got everything in the iPhone selected. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to click when I'm heading over into the object properties tab. And I'm simply going to change the location on the X somewhere over here and on the Y to move it backwards until it fits perfectly. So something like this, make sure that the spacing between these parts is approximately the same as the spacing between those parts. And that will make it look very uniform and mathematical. Uh, now, of course, uh, we also have to change the location of all the keyframes. So I'm going to take all of this. Let's see, we're on frame 19 now, and both of these happen at the same time. Uh, but actually, we want this one to move, and it should be revealed only from frame 11. So let's move this to frame 11. And one thing that I don't really like is that this one is now happening a bit too late. I already want it to occur a bit faster. So let's select the other one again. So over here, let's take all of these keyframes, make sure they are unlocked and let's move them to the side. So the animation happens just a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit more. And now we've got a cool reveal going on here. Now, of course, we want to do this one more time. So I'm going to select this entire iPhone here. Shift D, click on the empty, empty 004. Then go into the Delta transform once again. It's right over here. And we're going to move this backwards and to the front and make sure once again that the spacing between this is approximately the same. So something like, uh, something like this should probably do the trick. Maybe move it backwards just a little bit. Let's have a look. Should be something like this. And now that looks very Cool. Uh, however, we also need to change the position of the keyframes once again. So I'm going to bring this one all the way over here and it can be revealed a bit faster than the other ones, maybe like frame six. Looks pretty cool. Now, the last thing I want to do is to reveal an iPhone as well. So we're going to take this, shift D, duplicate it, select this empty, it's empty 005. I'm going to move it backwards on the Y location, not on the X location, something like this. 
I want to rotate this 180 degrees on the z-axis and I'm actually just going to delete the keyframes that are on this one. So delete all the keyframes, make sure that everything is unlocked, AX delete the keyframes. So let's see, we want the final one to start appearing from maybe somewhere over here. So let's G and X this, let's bring it over there and hide it right over there, press I. On frame 18 it should be invisible, we're going to deal with that later. And now this one is moving to frame 40, this one should as well, G and X, and maybe have it reveal itself just a little bit to the side there, and press I. Now this animation of course is quite off, and we're going into the graph editor once again. It's only moving on the X location, so let's open that up, A and dot, and uh, maybe what we can do is a slight bit faster, like this. I'm uh, going to open everything up, and now in frame 18, we want to scale this to zero and press I. Let's have a look at this. There you go. And this is now our iPhone animation. We can maybe change some things in this. So this one should probably move a little bit backwards. I'm going to select both of these, G and X, and make sure it starts on frame eight. Very cool. So I'm going to have this start at frame seven. And that looks pretty smooth, like this. Uh, now all we have to do is position the camera, maybe in a different position. Maybe we're just going to keep it like this and place some text right over here. Uh, I actually want to try bring it somewhat to the middle. Uh, now all we need to do is add a backplane. So add mesh, plane, let's add a plane right here. To bring this down until it's just on the iPhone. So somewhere around here, like that. I want to scale this up until it reaches approximately one third of this camera. So if you divide this camera by three, it should come somewhere over here. I'm heading into edit mode. I'm selecting this back plane right over there. So this edge, press E and Z, bring it upwards and take this line, go back to object mode, apply the scale, control A, go back into edit mode. Control B and let's baffle this, give it a whole bunch of subdivisions and shade smooth. Let's have a look at this in random mode. Now we don't have any lighting, so I'm going to bring in a HDRI, easy HDRI, but we need to be in cycles. So let's turn this on, motion blur should be turned on. And then I'm going to select uh, maybe sunset central. I like this one, Canary Wharf. Ooh, that one is a pretty good one as well. So I'm going to use Canary Wharf. I'm going to set this to 0.25. We don't want too much light from the HDRI, we simply want some reflections. And we also have to change the colors. Uh, so I'm going into this iPhone, and we did this before. You can also take the iPhones from previous uh, renders as well, but I think this works fine as well. So I'm going to Apple logo backside, shader editor, and I'm going to show you one simply if you haven't followed this course yet. So if this is a bit repetitive, I'm also taking into account that new viewers might be watching this video and they don't know how to do it and they don't want to shift over to another video, which is why I keep showing this every time I do it, uh, keeping into account that for some people, this might be the first video they see of the course. Uh, I'm going to change the color for this. So uh, that's right over here in our color ramp. But first we need to copy it. So this little button here takes care of that. And then I will set this to a, let's say a yellowish color maybe. Something like this. Uh, let me take that one, bring it also to a like gold yellowish type of tone, something like this should probably do the trick. And then I'm going to select the camera plate, duplicate this as well, and change this color until we have something that looks a bit like the previous color that we created. I'm going to do the same for all the other ones, and you can decide on whatever color you would like to do. I'm going to make it like gold, black, and uh, maybe white or red or something. So now we've got a couple of different colors for this iPhone. All we need to do is make sure that the screen, the screen that 001 is copied uh, in this particular iPhone. I'm going to copy it and I will plug in our iPhone screen back in, into the color of the emission, strength, bring it upwards, so now we actually have a screen. And that also looks pretty cool and interesting, if you ask me, it looks a whole lot better already. Now for the lighting, I'm going to keep it simple with this one. I'm heading over into my asset browser and I will add a Geolites Pro, Geolites Pro right over here, I'm going to drag it in and uh, bring it upwards. It'll probably be scaled up a bit. Let's go into the modifiers, I'm going to scale all, so I'm going to scale it all uh, to a size approximating uh, this distance. And maybe all of the lights are a bit too big now. So I'm going to make them a whole lot smaller as well. Uh, maybe we want the temperature to be 8000 instead of 5000 because I think this looks a bit warm. So I'm going to turn it off by going into object properties. Go to visibility and turn it off into the camera right over there. As you can see, this is a bit more orangey, uh, but I actually want it to be a bit more blue. So I'm going to set the color temperature to 8000 right over here, 8000 as well. And uh, let's have a look at this. So we're going to rotate it and maybe we can get something interesting going on for us uh, like this. Maybe I'm going to bring it upwards just a little bit, offset the lights. Increase the power, not too much. I'm going to increase the power of the top light as well. Maybe increase the scale of it. And let me show you what I'm doing, by the way, because 
then you get a bit more of an idea of where all the lights are located at. Uh, so it's right here. And I'm going to play around with the offset. Something like this. Should probably do the trick. I think this lighting setup might work fine for what we are trying to do. I'm going to increase the power of the top light right over here. And as you can see, that is doing quite a lot. And uh, maybe it's a bit too much, actually 1.5. Uh, do we want less lights? Three or two is actually the way to go. We can rotate this around. I'm actually going to set it to three, maybe a bit more to the backside. Let's see what it did for us. All right, so that's pretty cool. You can also add an area lamp and play around with that. Geolights Pro is the first, fastest and only procedural lighting solution in Blender. And uh, in the end we will have something that looks like this. Very simple stuff and uh, we can play around with the sliders. So I'm going to render this out and I will see you in the next video where we are going to edit everything together. So I hope you enjoyed this course thus far and that you learned a whole lot. Click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coupe. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.